Hello everyone, sorry for the wait, but hopefully to make up for it, here's a very sophisticated and very large DOS virus called Stainless Steel Rat. If you want to learn more in depth about this virus, I suggest you take a look in the description. There's a malwareup.org link that is a forum post by Flight CPU Boy, and he disassembled and recommended this virus to me, and did an amazing job with it, and basically just took apart this virus to its core and explained everything about it. So if you want to know some really in-depth details on the inner workings of this virus, check that out. If we look at the virus itself, you can see it's huge. It's over 20 kilobytes. The virus itself is just over 18 kilobytes, and most of that size is comprised of its four encryption engines, which are designed to just basically mess with antivirus researchers or hackers or anybody trying to get a look at the inner workings of this virus. So you can imagine what Flight CPU Boy had to go through trying to disassemble this. And it was quite a process, and he details it all in the post, so once again, I suggest you check it out. Before we look at the virus, we're just going to look at a few benchmarks here. If we look on our uh, command line right now in the root directory, we have a few files that we should take a look at. First is sys2.com. This is a copy of the sys file from the DOS directory. We also have Jerusun, which is the Sunday variant of the Jerusalem virus. This will come into play later. We have aidstest.com. This is a renamed version of sys.com once again. It's just the basic sys file. If we run it, it's just going to tell us that it's missing the required parameter, which is the standard behavior for sys.com. And this comes into play when Stainless Steel Rat is looking for a file called aidstest, uh, which was an antivirus at the time. So if we take a look at this system, we can see it runs pretty quickly. This directory listing takes about a second and a half, maybe that. If we look at some files on here, we'll see that our old friend graphics.com is 19,742 bytes. If we take a look at some of these files, sys2, it's 9,432, and same for AIDS test, since it is the same exact file, just renamed. So now we will go ahead and run the virus. We will start seeing some of these effects happen. So when we run it, it takes a little bit, decrypts through the four engine. And finally it's done, and the virus is now present in memory, and will affect pretty much everything, and its disruptions are immediately evident. It doesn't wait for a date to drop a payload. Things go bad immediately. So if we take a look at this computer right now, look at that, look how much slower this is. Just trying to run anything is just impossible. It takes forever. Programs crash a lot. Try it. it infects any EXE files, but I've noticed every single EXE it infects, it infects in such a way that it never runs again. So we're going to try to avoid that. We're going to infect sys2 here. Takes a little while. See how much longer this takes to run. And finally we get the print out. Required parameter missing. If we take a look at the file now, see it has grown by the size of the virus, so now it is 27,000 bytes instead of 9,000. Which is a pretty significant difference. And this will happen for any file that we uh, infect. We're going to try running AIDS test now. This should print out a Russian in mushroom. Print out a message in Russian? Wow, okay. And it does, but we don't have the Russian language pack on here. Now, we're not running Russian MS-DOS, so we can't see the Cyrillic text. But basically this says something along the lines of shouldn't the programmer of AIDS test retire by now? And the reason why I renamed sys.com to ace test is that it looks at the second and third character, and if those are I and D, respectively, it'll launch this payload and hang the machine. So basically, that's how it looks for ace test, is it checks the second and third character of the file name. Up next, this next payload is designed for basically people trying to debug the virus, but also any viruses that may have been in the system when stainless steel rat infected it. So we'll go ahead and reinfect the system through sys2. Wait for it. There we go. And now we're going to run a virus that it looks for. In this case, the Sunday variant of Jerusalem. And when it detects that a virus that it knows is trying to run, we get an alarm. So alarm, warning, danger, approaching, hacker, fucker, TSR, shit, or any virus detected. So basically, it's looking for anybody trying to hack into the virus or any virus that it knows, and in this case, it knows the Sunday variant of Jerusalem. Anyone who wants to fuck revenge is naive Nige man. It's supposed to be naive. So, it goes on to list some more things about the virus. 
This is only begin when 95 and her lamers must die. Searching, seek, and destroy. There can be only one. And we'll go ahead and restart and take a look at the next payload. Okay, this next payload is time-based and activates after an infected file has been run in about 23 minutes have elapsed. So, we've got and run this. I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll take a look at what it does. And there we go. There is the next payload of Stainless Steel Rat. The computer is still completely usable, but this is one of those DOS viruses that likes to play with the screen. So we can still do our very slow directory listings, but it will shake like crazy while you do so. You can see bits and pieces coming on the right side there. And in general, it's just an unusable mess. It, it just doesn't work very well. For me, personally. I don't know about you, but I probably couldn't last very long using a computer in this state. So, it continues to shake for as long as it wants. Every time you run any infected file and wait 23 minutes or so, this will happen. So we'll go ahead and restart and take a look at the last payload of the stainless steel rat virus. Okay, this time we need to run the program once again. Make sure the system is nice and infected. We're going to run it one more time, just to be sure. And now, in order to see the last payload, we need to wait 15 more minutes. So once again, I'll be back, and we'll take a look at what happens. Okay, 15 minutes have passed. Now we will go ahead and run our test batch script. This will continuously run our file here. And the reason why we're doing this is because Stainless Steel Rat, once an infected file has been run the first time, starts a timer. And after 15 minutes, it checks to see if 50 files have been run after that point. So you can't run the 50th file before the 15 minutes elapse, otherwise it doesn't work, and you'll just go straight into the screen shaking payload. Here we have to wait while it iterates through the very slow process of executing this file over and over. And once it hits the 50th time, it will go into Stainless Steel Rat's final payload that I will be showing you shortly. And here we go. This is Stainless Steel Rat's payload. This is Revenge by Stainless Steel Rat. Of a Stainless Steel Rat, rather. Nice colorful message, flashing red revenge. Nicely drawn out, and if we hit escape, the virus formats a random sector of the hard drive and displays its copyright message. Version 1.01, .01, released April 20th, 1996. Copyright 9697, Two Rats Techno Soft, written by Stainless Steel Rat. And with that, this video pretty much comes to a close. Nice colorful payload there for the ending. Thank you guys for helping me get to 60,000 subscribers, and thanks very much for your patience. I'm finishing up my master's degree, hopefully by next month, so once that's through, hopefully I'll have a job, but hopefully we'll also have a little more time for videos. So thanks for watching, thanks for helping me get to 60,000 subscribers, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.